are going to be looking at a bunch of cut squares today. Uh, I've done quite a bit of learning. If you watched that recent video where I built an eBay grab bag, I had this binder full of mint cut squares from the early 20th century um, and uh, late 19th century uh, from the United States. So I figured, uh, why not show you guys some of them? Uh, I was definitely getting familiar with them. This is a, all kinds of different cut squares. I pulled these out for various reasons. Many of them are just simply nice fancy cancels. Uh, some of these other ones in these stock cards are actually decent value and pretty cool in my opinion. So uh, we're going to go through U.S. mint cut squares to begin with. We're going to take a look at some other random stamps that I have happened to come across. So I'd like to start out with some basics about these wrappers. These are called stamped envelopes and wrappers. Okay. Um, one thing that I didn't know until I happened to stumble into my Scott Specialized Catalog of the US just recently to try and figure out some of these different ones. Um, they have different grades for these. Now, this is the worst. Um, when they cut out the stamp with no margins left around, that's actually the worst that you could do. Um, so, this is even though they did a nice job cutting this out, this is not ideal. You actually would prefer to have some form of margin. So they're, I'm looking at the catalog right now and it's telling me, uh, in all honesty, that um, something like this would be considered fine or very fine. Uh, this might actually be closer to a very fine than a fine. Uh, the margins are pretty decent, but uh, the difference between very fine and extremely fine um, is basically just the size of the margins, right? So the bigger the margins, the better. Uh, I'm looking through the pile trying to find one that may be considered very fine, but I don't think so. Basically, these margins would probably extend just a bit further, you know? It would just be a bigger cutout. And generally, from what I'm seeing in these pictures, uh, these stamps are usually at the top right of the envelope, so you wouldn't really expect a big margin on the top right corner, but you could definitely have these margins, you know, be extended quite far out on the sides. Um, and so, the larger the margin, the better. So I figured that I would just take a second and tell you guys that that was news to me. Uh, when I, I've been looking at these, and I actually thought they were pretty cool, um, but this is about as crappy as you could get as far as the actual conditions. So, go figure. Just like any other stamp in the world, we like nice big margins. So let's just start taking a look at all these. This one is an awesome fancy cancel. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, to try and educate you a little bit, since I just learned this stuff, when you look up in the catalog, these cut squares, this one probably will say something to the effect of red, comma, blue. And what they're saying is, when they list it like that, that the stamp is red and it's on blue paper. So um, they always say the color of the stamp, comma, the color of the paper after. So this is a beautiful um, fancy cancel. Got another one right here. Very cool. I like it. Okay, this one is uh, um, War Department Signal Service. Uh, it says $300 fine for screwing with this document. I really tried to find this in the catalog and I couldn't. Uh, I have no idea where this is in the catalog and I'm in the specialized catalog. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I don't think this is. I don't think this is in the catalog, which is weird because it's been canceled. But, anyways, uh, this one's kind of a mystery to me. I actually did spend some time, and I came up with nothing. Don't know. Next one. This one has a pretty cool Ohio cancel. I like that. Got one more here with a. Another fancy cancel. Very nice. And we got a different fancy cancel. I like that one. That one's cool. 
I, see, I find myself being a fan of fancy cancels. I like them. So this one's actually in, I'd say, very fine condition. Fine, very fine. Decent margins. Uh, that's what I was, um, I was mentioning, I think, uh, that the, the top right margin will always be the smallest, so you can just expect these to be bigger, the left and bottom. This one, hand cancelled, 1878, with the manuscript. We've got... This one, um, honestly, I just thought that it was kind of interesting looking, the way that the cancel smudged off of this, because these are embossed. They're raised up. You can feel the design when you run your finger along them. Uh, I don't know, just the way that that cancel ended up kind of working out on that, I found an interesting look. Next up, we've got... Another fancy cancel. Four leaf. Got another fancy cancel here. This one's bigger than the last, uh, you know, kind of four banger. I don't know what you call these four leaf clover or what. But, um, definitely a different design than this one. It's just bigger. Well, same design, bigger size. So, next fancy cancel kind of circular bar um, grid cancel here and we have another fancy cancel I like this one blue okay now these are interesting I came across both of these these are the only two that I can find that have this kind of cancel and um, you can obviously tell one's red one's black totally different stamps um, yeah I can only imagine it says it said cancelled <laughs> but I've never seen a cancel that actually says cancelled <laughs> so this would be the first for me uh, I thought they were interesting and I am going to keep them for that reason next up we've got another fancy cancel this one uh, apparent, appears to be a circle with a dot in the center I kind of like how it smudged his face there. It's almost like he's got a war paint on, ready to go. And then here's a very similar one with just a circle. So, nice contrast of design. Get to see the difference on those. Um, this I saved because a very clearly legible cancel Springfield, Massachusetts. It's nice. Okay, we got another fancy cancel. Lots of fancy cancels on these. They're very cool. Uh, okay, so this is just an airmail stamp. Uh, I did like the cancel. Airmail, six cents. Uh, probably not really worth anything. I don't think this particular embossed stamp is either. Uh, but I just liked the nice clear cancel. Very legible. Next up, we have this one. eighteen eighty six I'm guessing Cleveland well it kinda looks like LA uh, I saved this one because you can see a majority of the cancels so. even though I can't quite make it out um, okay this one pretty thick blotchy but New York New York cancel there was plenty of New York cancels on this these stamps in this binder and uh, even though this is not the best example, I just kind of like this one. You can still tell it says New York. And, uh, okay, we got next up another fancy cancel. And then yet another. This one's pretty cool. Apparently Philadelphia. And no, I have not quite seen one like that. It looks like four rings with the number five in the middle. Excuse my stomach. Uh, yeah, that's uh, different. So this will be the first railroad or railway mail service one that I'll show you. Uh, there's only a few that I have. Um, I'm guessing 1903. That's cool. RMS always means railway mail service. At some point that guy was on a choo-choo train. Okay, so this 
is the first of pretty much two uh, flag cancels that I have. This one you can clearly tell since you actually have the stars in it. Uh, it does have a numeral one. A uh, nice light cancel, except for the tops a little deeper, a little darker, but uh, very cool. Nice, clearly identifiable flag cancel on that. This one, I do believe, also is a flag cancel. Even though I can't see any stars, kind of looks like the end of another flag and then the post and beginning of this flag, so calling that a flag cancel. Uh, next up, this guy. Wow, what the heck? Uh, caught my eye. Just a big, soft, square blotch with uh, the number 8 clear in the center. So weird. I've never seen one like that ever. Um, definitely a unique cancel to me. Pretty cool. Next up, oh yeah, here's a even better than before. Clearly, New York cancel. Um, on the, what is this? I don't know who this guy is. Don't know who he is, but nice cancel. Uh, okay, another fancy cancel. Nice design. And we have yet another similar design to the last, but definitely different. Bigger. Older. Clover design, looks like. Got another one of those circular... Uh, okay, so this is a official stamp. Um, Again, another fancy cancel. It almost looked like a obliterator, but I'm pretty sure it is a fancy cancel. So, alright, this is one more. Okay, now this says FRB New York. It says a mm, 19, you know, it almost looks like 84 to me. Probably June or something, 11th. And, uh, I say that, um, I have no idea what that cancel stands for. Federal Reserve Bank of New York, I mean, I don't know. But, um, pretty cool. So this is yet another fancy. I've actually got a whole stack of these with fancy cancels on them. We'll kind of blow through them all. So you can take a quick look at all the different variations. Ooh, this next one um, I actually quite like. Let me get my, get my stuff organized. Look at that. Beautiful star. Very nice. Um, we'll certainly be keeping this one. I don't have many of this star. Uh, and it's very cool. Okay, another fancy. Kind of circular rings. This one is a dotted fancy cancel. Another uh, circular fancy cancel there. This is... This one, um, you know, it sure looks like two cancels on here. I mean, they look like just plain old circles. They're pretty light, um, but unless it was a double circle on one cancel, um, like one device, uh, it almost looks like they did it twice to me. They went boom, boom. Um, I don't know. I've never seen a double circle cancel. And like I said, this one's pretty faint, so kind of hard to tell, but that sure seems like what's going on. So I thought that was cool. Uh, let's see. This is another railroad, railway mail service cancel. So we know that traveled on the train. Okay, this guy is... Uh, I have no idea what the cancel says. Oopsie. Andrew or something, I don't know. Um, but one thing that I found interesting is there is still a small remnant of an actual stamp on the corner of this thing. So apparently um, there was a stamp there. And whoever cut this off, I would have words with you, sir. Why would you cut the cancel in half and the stamp? Ugh, gosh, that was ugh, really grinds my gears. All right, so next, I saved this. It's just a light flag-looking cancel. 
I say this mainly because um, the actual paper that it's on, this horizontal green lined paper, I don't have a single mint square uh, to compare this one to. This is the only one, this kind of paper that I have. So I'm keeping it. This guy, big old New York, cancel with an F. You know, these numbers made me think it was perhaps on a registered mail uh, envelope, but I don't know. Uh, but nice, clearly legible cancel there. Okay, we got another one here that has, I, th I think, probably N Massachusetts. It almost looks like an NAS or MAS. Nashville, Massachusetts. I'm not sure, but I don't know. I just kind of like the, that cancel, so a little mystery to it as well. Maybe one day I'll figure it out. Okay, this is yet another cancel. I just like this one. I haven't seen one exactly like that. Pretty neat. Uh, another fancy cancel. And we have another fancy cancel. So this one is very nice. I like it. Another example. This one has nice big margins. You can see a slight bit of the script here. That one's nice. This one's cool too. Um, definitely have not seen that fancy cancel. I mean, this is similar to uh, like those ones we saw in those railway mail service um, uh, bun uh, stamps, which I'm kind of looking through to try and find one. But I think you all have seen that um, obliterator a million times. And uh, this is a different design. Oh, not an obliterator, I'm sorry. Um, it's the one like this. Um, this style of design. I'm sure you've all seen this a million times on a bunch of different stamps. This is similar, you know. But not the same. It just looks like a, a circle in the center. Usually these tell a location. These, uh, these ones will have a number to indicate where it was canceled. So anyway, that's a fancy cancel that I just simply haven't come across. Here's yet another. Very cool looking cancel on that. Okay, we've got very nice looking cancel there. And the final one in that stack um, is actually this. Just kind of a diagonal cancellation. Uh, I saw a few of this style of cancel on in that binder. Some of them are horizontal, some are straight down. And this is one of the only ones I saw that was a diagonal, so decided to keep her. So I've got a few uh, that I forgot about actually. This is a <laughs> airmail stamp that has a railway mail service cancel. Nice, clear, legible cancel. Uh, Los Angeles, California, 12 p.m., June 17th, 1936, at the Air Mail Field. Very cool. Interesting that it is Air Mail that ended up on the Railway Mail Service. Uh, I haven't quite seen that. Here's another Air Mail stamp that has, uh, which I just happened to notice, Army Postal Service. Boom! And guess what? 1945. Wartime. Uh, this one's cool. I will certainly be holding on to this. Uh, Army cancellations are coveted. And the fact that it's 1945, I mean, we all know what year that was. So, um, Wow. Very cool. Now, I actually don't know the date. It says March 20th. I don't actually know if the war was over by then or not. I'd have to look that up. Uh, I'm not some kind of expert with that, but I saw 45 and army postage. Boom. I thought that was awesome. <clears throat> this last one of uh, these loose uh, cut squares I have, I just like the uh, cancel. I mean, heck, Honolulu, Honolulu Hawaii. Um, it's just interesting to me. I don't have a lot like that. I have, I found a couple that had it cut off, you know, had the same bars, but you couldn't see the location. And, this one has nice margins. I mean, I think this is in pretty good shape and a very clear legible cancel. Now, this is a really early one. Uh, it's 
it's not number U9, it's just the U9 image design uh, has a period after the word postage. That's one of the first differentiating uh, factors in this stamped envelope stamp. So, um, these, this is where, if you don't know, um, which I actually didn't until yesterday, when you go looking in the uh, specialized catalog or the regular catalog, um, these stamped envelopes and wrappers have a really serious amount of variations. This specific one for Design U9 has 11 different dies. What the heck? Uh, this is part of why I just haven't really gotten into these. I mean, gosh, you know, early U.S. stamps can already be tedious. And, um, yeah, these early stamped envelopes, I mean, gosh, 11 dies? Ugh. Um, so, anyways, I was thinking that maybe I'd expertise it because when I looked in the catalog, even though I don't know exactly which number this is, they range from honestly anywhere from 12 bucks to like $5,000. And so I thought, wow, maybe this thing would happen to be one of the special ones. And as I look at it, I think I'm probably not going to bother expertizing it, knowing what I know now. The fact that it's been cut out this way has zero margins. They even cut into the actual rings of the design of the stamp. Um, I just think it's in poor enough shape that. Uh, I'm not going to count on it being anything too special, so I might actually just toss that back in that binder. Next one. So, uh, this is number U015, supposedly. Now, I remember this actually, I think that this, uh, this is U015, and I think that this is U014. Now, uh, the differentiating factors here will be the color of the paper. Now, uh, whoever had that binder before me, they also thought that this was a UO15. And I, I could buy it, because you can probably tell on the camera the tone difference here. This one's definitely more eggshell white. This one's closer to being an amber color. So, um, you know, if this was black and amber, you know, it's from 1877. It'd be worth about 4250 in the catalog. If this really is amber-colored paper, and then this one, not being black and amber, just simple black, is how they describe it with, you know, regular white back paper. That's only worth 450. But I put both of these in here so that you could potentially. I, honestly, when I look in the camera, I can't tell. Uh, but maybe you can. Maybe when I'm done with this video. And watch it on the TV, I can actually tell too. Um, totally seems to be different colored paper, so that was that one. Just goes to show little subtle differences that could be worth uh, make, make the difference, you know, make them worthwhile. Alrighty, these next ones are actually pretty decent value. Um, let's see here, this is uh, number U105. This one is mint, never hinged. Um, Oh my gosh, as I look at it, I see the smallest smudge right there. Darn it! I didn't notice that before. There is a very small smudge right there. It's just the tiniest little dot. So it's almost completely perfectly mint, but I was checking it yesterday and... Um, oh, and somebody wrote on it. So anyways, never mind. It's not perfect, but... Still, it's unused. Um, uh, mint Never Hinged, $125 catalog value. It's from... 1870 to 71 says it's carmine color. So 90 cents too, I think, is part of why it has such a good cat value. Um, the higher denominations just kind of help with that. So this next one, number U016. Uh, so this is for the quote unquote postal service, or they, maybe that's just what they call it, obviously, it's for, <laughs> for the postal service. Uh, so they're worth 40 bucks used or 125 bucks mint never hinged. Um, I said seems used with a question mark. I can't tell. You know, it obviously has some discoloration over on the side. It's kind of general discoloration. It's not horrible. It's, it's really pretty good. Um, they cut it in such a way that you can still see the entire design, even though there's very minimal margins. Um, looking at the back of it, that's probably part of why I think it's used. Uh, there's like not really any adhesive left. There's you know kind of wear and tear that would make you think it has been used. And 
Um, if, if there is a cancel on here, it's just so faint that I can't tell. But anyway, that's an old one. Um, and uh, whether it's used or mint, um, it has decent value. So pretty cool. Next up, we've got so number U529. They're worth $4 a piece. I think I actually have a few of these, yeah. Um, well, that one has a don't use this, you'll get penalized warning. Some regular old cancels. Actually, I wonder what that said. Callister, like McAllister, or I don't know what that would have said, but interesting. Something about the name McAllister pops in my head. That one has nice margins. Regular old cancel on it. Yeah, and then this guy has a 1904 Winchester City, I'm guessing. Gloucester, maybe? New Jersey? Hmm. So that's, um, that one definitely, that's an example of getting closer to, you know, when you look, compare these two, that's, that's getting closer to extra fine, those margins. So yeah, it's actually pretty good examples. It'd be like, I'd be saying, I'd be saying fine, very fine, extra fine. You know, that was how I would look at that. So uh, cool. So uh, this guy goes back in there. So next. U390. It's worth 11 bucks. It's chocolate color from 1903. Uh, I actually think I do have a few of them in there. Yep. Whoa, that one's got a cool cancel. Let's check that out. Well, I remember looking at this yesterday. I have no idea what that says is the truth. cancels yeah so nothing too crazy but I liked um, I liked them and they had decent cat value in fact they're 11 bucks a piece yeah, four, uh, four of them cool okay these ones yeah I went through this yesterday this is fun figuring out these surcharges um, so these have been surcharged you know two a two surcharge on a three cent stamp, all of them. Uh, they all seem to have the same design as far as I can tell. Um, now, the, I wasn't a hundred percent sure on which numbers they were because they're either U458 or 459. Actually really minimal catalog value, they're only like 35 cents to a dollar. Um, I did verify that they are type 3 and that refers to the actual uh, cancel itself uh, and it's it, it, it talks about um, the millimeter spacing in between the individual lines and then the total spacing altogether which the one that I was able to get a pretty clear total measurement on was this guy and uh, they're all there they're end to end so 25 millimeter total length uh, if, and if I'm not mistaken, it's two millimeters in between each bar. So that made these at all a type three. Uh, they are called provisional two cent surcharges of 1920 to 21. They're made at the post office machines with canceling slugs. Using canceling slugs uh, to put these on. So I, uh, I don't have any actual reality on what canceling slugs are, but imagine something that presses against it so that was a little learning experience from yesterday and uh, I just figured I'd share those ones alrighty next number U374 worth eight bucks from 1899 and uh, besides that we have um, this one is Carmine on blue paper uh, number U370 from 1899, they're worth $10 a piece. I have several of those. 
This one is U360 worth 11 bucks from 1899. Uh, it almost looks like oriental buff paper. Okay, so next we have uh, what I actually just had to figure out again. Uh, this I wrote U269 and that was wrong. This is a U369. Okay, now this is on oriental buff paper. Uh, just so you know, this is worth about twelve fifty, which I actually forgot to put on there. So, um, I wanted to do a little lesson because I had never heard of Oriental Buff. I mean, I've read it in the catalog. I just kind of pass over it. No idea what the heck they're talking about. So, when I googled Oriental Buff, it informed me it's actually a kind of pink. So, when you're looking at these stamps in the catalog and it says, you know, what does it say? Um... It says carmine comma oriental buff so they're saying the stamp is carmine and it's on oriental buff paper and since oriental buff is pink um, I decided to put this other one here so you can see in comparison because this is what IE did to determine that um, this is regular white backed paper so you can clearly tell it is kind of pinkish now the difference between a lot of these are amber color as well um, I just think amber isn't quite this tone. Um, it's not white. It's amber is like somewhere in between this. And uh, but this one, as I look at it in front of me, it's clearly kind of pink. So there you go. I figured I'd share that. That was how I determined this to be Oriental Buff. I was really torn between this and amber, and let some Google searches and some good old-fashioned reasoning I was able to determine oriental buff on this guy so that's cool this next one is you number U300 um, from 1887 to 94 it's only worth 35 cents but I can tell you the reason I saved it is for one thing nice margins um, and then it's got a really nice cancellation on it it says uh, looks like Wellesley well, Leslie Hills, May 6, 18, maybe 88 or 98, 9 a.m. in Massachusetts. Man, that thing is just legible, and I like it. So. Next will be this number U87. So they say uh, that it's dark red and cream. Uh, from 1870 to 71, worth about 25 bucks. Uh, has a nice fancy cancel on it. Um, I actually slipped it in this mount because I just had the mount laying around. Uh, it's pretty beat up. Definitely seen way, way better days. Um, so, $25 cat price probably goes down to $5 or something lame. But, um, yeah, pretty cool stamp. I wrote red and, or dark red and cream with a question mark because this is where I am no expert. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, is this cream color? paper or is it faded or oxidized I don't know but the to the best of my ability that's what I think it is is a uh, number u87 so next up number u122 Jackson uh, so I forgot to put the value uh -huh. that would be $65 used but that one's mint hinged so uh, actually it's more like 140. Wow. So, uh, that, see, the thing is, though, the values are for mint, never hinged, and this one is hinged. So, man, I can't sloppy. Jesus Christ. All right. So, uh, yeah, that one's in fantastic shape. That one, I think I actually saw on the, the eBay grab bag video I did, and, um, I didn't even realize till I was editing the video that this guy was sitting there all beautiful uh, and they had written a value of about 150 bucks uh, which it looks like it's dropped in price 10 bucks to 140 but it has been hinged and it's not perfectly mint so you know it's not going to get all of that kind of cat value but that is a relatively high value um, stamp for these cutting in squares so that was cool. I'll be keeping that. Okay. Uh, oh, I did write the catalog value. It was just over here. <laughs> so, um, this one on the side, number U351, 
there's three of them there were 25 bucks each how about that oh, cool decent margins somewhere between fine very fine probably closer to fine but that's cool next up number u40 from 1861 it's yellow green color there were 30 bucks a piece I have three of them now the only one that's probably worth 30 bucks would be this uh, and even so it still has that bottom margin it still has the full design but it's cut off pretty much touching the design and has three decent margins these have no freaking margins and were cut horribly like a child did it so they ain't worth jack but uh, that one's nice and so these are ones I decided to keep to the side decent cat value that one's actually quite nice okay this next stamp uh, you may have seen in a previous video when I was unboxing that Atfel bomb collection this is an interesting stamp and I actually I spent quite a lot of time trying to find what this stamp is my goodness it was not easy um, because of this stamp though I have actually this might sound dumb but I forgot that I bought the US specialized catalog I knew I bought the you know Scott specialized catalog of stamps and covers which covers the world I forgot I actually blew the money on the US specialized which did have this um, thankfully so for one thing I was able to figure out what the heck this stamp is and for another thing I got more familiar with my catalog that I had paid good money for <laughs> and just forgot about so um it's number RNF1 this is a type F um, this is revenue stamped paper now when you look in the catalog and specialized catalog uh, what took me for a loop was I mean it says internal revenue so I knew it was a revenue stamp uh, but I was looking around uh, and I went I went to um, first I went to revenue stamps wasn't there makes sense it's apparently uh, an envelope stamp or a wrap paper stamp or something and um, so it wasn't in there and I'm like well what the heck if it's not in the revenue section what do I do uh, and then I'm like oh there's an emboff, embossed revenue stamped paper section in the specialized catalog uh, and so as I scroll through boom I ended up finding it uh, it's actually only worth five bucks used uh, and the type F just refers to the so the you know the design the of this uh, size and shape <coughs> there's several other Franklin internal revenue stamps that are similar but not this style so uh, it says that type A through F and P through W were printed by the American Phototype Company. Uh, and then, yeah, so this is this is not going to be on this. See, this is under revenue stamped paper in the catalog, not embossed revenue stamped paper. So, anyways, that was my tip. If you see this kind of thing and you look in the catalog, they're not alphabetical on the index. You can have stamped and revenue stamps at the top of that list and at the bottom of the list <laughs> I don't know what the rhyme or reason how they ordered this index in this catalog is but yeah so a little confusing but no I guess this is not embossed revenue stamp paper it's just revenue stamped paper okay so anyways kind of rough on the back um, but yeah when I found that I was really glad I was like ah got better with using my catalog I figured out what this totally weird stamp is. I wanted to mention when I was browsing through that index in the specialized US catalog that uh, it had a section called test stamps and I had an epiphany that uh, I own a test stamp press sheet here and this is from the 1973 uh, Christmas stamp. This is a test sheet for that stamp. It's got number TD117 uh, and this is a press sheet of 200 so uh, I bought this on eBay for like $500 and to be honest you guys I mean I thought it was a pretty reputable seller but I didn't really know what I was getting for sure isn't that silly but uh, all of my senses told me it was legitimate and then uh, so it's nice to 
validate that because, uh, um, yeah, uh, I wasn't sure. Anyways, uh, in the catalog, you probably can see here, it says press sheet of 200, 750 bucks. So the fact that I paid uh, 500 bucks and I see that in the catalog makes me feel pretty good. I'm like, Phew, at least I know it's the real deal. So. And as I get ready to show you the next batch of stuff, I just wanted to mention uh, Christmas seals. Those fun little stickers. Uh, when I looked in the catalog, the early ones actually have decent value. And um, they, the value of Christmas seals drops off about 1919. So uh, heads up, you know, if you find a Christmas seal that looks pretty old, or if you want to go take a look in the catalog if you've got it, um, yeah, they actually have decent value, the early ones. Just food for thought. Next up, this little gem right here from Hungary. Uh, you know, sometimes you come across a stamp that just leaves you speechless. So, um, <laughs> this is going to become part of my collection. <laughs> All right, this uh, this next one is a uh, Guernsey. <laughs> It's a uh, number 22. It's a $13 stamp. It's mint and hinged. Uh, so I think what makes it have good value is the fact that it's a 10 shilling stamp. That's a pretty high denomination. Uh, it's actually in really good shape. It does have a hinge on there. So hinge remaining. Lightly hinged on there. Next up, one from Canada. This is number 27 uh, from 1868. <clears throat> it's got a catalog value of 140 bucks, but this one's a little bit beat up. You can see these perfs in that corner. Nice cancel. I mean, it's definitely a heck of an obliterator. You can still make out the queen's head underneath, though. Uh, <clears throat> that uh, perf damage even more evident when you flip it over and uh, definite hinge looks like a couple of hinge marks so this thing's pretty rough but overall a, a cool stamp so these ones are from Siberia and it was not easy for me to figure that out uh, when you go to Russia and you look up these original stamps uh, designs and you're looking for surcharges and other stuff they'll say for dish, you know, they sh they list like a couple surcharges, but then they say, by the way, in a paragraph at, at, at the bottom, that uh, there's like ten other countries that you need to go check for certain surcharges. So I just started working my way down the list. I think Siberia was like country number five or something, uh, thankfully, and um, I finally found this surcharge. So these are number, looks like it says number three, I guess. That's my handwriting sloppy. Number three, uh, dull orange yellow. They're from Siberia. I said that there's 20 of them. They're one dollar each, and they're mint never hinged. So uh, they do have a bit of a uh, like a natural curvature here, uh, but they're all perfectly mint except for that. So no hinges or anything. Uh, these, I don't have any idea what I'm going to do with them, to be honest. I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, that one has a smudge, so they're not they're not all perfect. But, uh, decent shape. They're in really good shape overall. Uh, and then this is a bunch of imperforate blocks. It says number eight. They're red, imperforate, one dollar each. Value, mint never hinge. There's 20 of them. Uh, two blocks of six and two blocks of four and these guys are definitely mint never hinged but uh, just like the other ones I don't know if it's just like how these guys were stored I know the glass scene was old so that could be it so, um, I don't know if it's just this thing with these Russian stamps but they all just have they want to curve a little all on their own 
Okay, these next stamps came in this glass scene, and uh, they say with this little paper, German propaganda for France, and it has printed out copies of all of the stamps. It says a complete set of five Legion stamps issued in 1942 honors the French volunteers of the Legion against Bolshevism in Russia. Each field post stamp had a surtax of one franc. Interesting, huh? Note the stamp showing French legionnaires saluting Napoleon's grenadiers. Pretty cool. German propaganda for France. So this one, I found at work. I thought it was interesting. It's clearly some kind of um, printed, you know, envelope stamp or something. But uh, I'm pretty sure that it's hungry. And I thought it had a nice postmark, and uh, so I figured I'd put that to the side and share that one. Some writing on the back. Obviously, came off as of something. Pretty cool. I haven't seen that before. So, a couple of other random stamps that I had checked out at work. Uh, this is the state of Qatar, these two. This is number 279 from 1972, worth $10. Um, that cancellation would almost lead one to believe it's a CTO, but it is definitely postal use. There is no gum left. The one next to it is number 298, worth $24. Surprising, they're both used. Uh, and then this guy is from Southern Rhodesia, number 53 is 8 bucks. Uh, two shilling, six pence stamp. So, these were three randoms. Okay, continuing on with random stamps. Um, as I browse through stuff, I have been trying to collect some Churchill. I know you're looking for that stuff, Daniel. It is extremely slow going, and you know what, to be honest, I'm not sure how much I'll really come up with, because I know that you're trying to find specific uh, date stamps and stuff, and um, I mean, these are mint, so do you want Churchill just for the sake of, I mean, do you just want all the Churchill that I can find, period, or? I think you're only interested in really certain articles to piece together your timeline. Let me know. Uh, but yeah, see, I've been trying to find some stuff, but it's like, it's much less than I was expecting. I certainly haven't found any covers or anything like that, so sorry, but... Uh, so I think these are actually... I'll show you these coming up. So that's it. Uh, just some random Churchill stamps. That one's from Haiti. That one's from Grenada. Always has an interesting look on his face, huh? So yeah, end of random stamps now. Uh, we're gonna actually <coughs> take a left turn here. We're gonna check out this banknote. So, uh, one of my customers uh, actually gave me this as a tip the other day. And being who I am, I was like, well, let me take a look at it and see if there's anything cool. And sure enough, I noticed this little purple bowl. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this kind of stuff. Sorry, I'm all shaky. I don't know if you've seen this kind of stuff on bills before, but it turns out that what those are called is chop marks. C-H-O-P-M-A-R-K. Uh, they're little tiny stamps, and um, people were saying in forums, uh, you know, these are used for gangs, drug dealers. Uh, pretty much any kind of, uh, you know, secret organization that you could think of. There's all kinds of different chop marks out there. This happens to be a purple bull. And, um, anyways, I thought that that was interesting. Uh, I wanted to look it up, and I was hoping it'd be something unique, but they're really, I don't think they are worth anything. Um, but something to look out for. I mean, if you collect banknotes, which I do, 
Um, now I can add this in there and say this guy has a purple chop mark of a bowl. Pretty cool.